Well, this evening, I'm in another basement again, and I'm here today with uh, David Venables. And David is uh, another Ottawa area model railroader. He's been uh, a part of our railroad for community for quite a while now. And uh, you're part of the British Model Railroad Association. Yep. Yep. And uh, have been sort of one of the kingpin members in terms of maintaining that uh, good organization in Ottawa, I guess, and across Canada for that matter. Well, it's across North America. Yeah, across North America. It's British Railway yeah. Modelers of North America. Ah, so there we go. Right. Okay. The yeah, US. yeah, yeah. So, how many members does it have? Uh, about 330. Oh, okay. Um, the membership's about two Canadians or two in Canada yeah. for every one in the U.S. Oh, okay. And uh, so the center of, uh, of model modeling in the British tradition is um, in in Canada, as you're saying, it's a two-to-one ratio. Are they um, in the sort of the uh, Ontario area or across the country? Um, a lot in Ontario, yeah. as you might expect, and a lot in uh, B.C. Mm -hmm. Same reason, a lot of Brits. Yeah. Immigrate to British Columbia. Yeah, it sort of <coughs> happened in the 50s and 60s, yeah, I guess, was yeah, pretty popular right, at right. that time. But we've, I mean, Ottawa's got uh, about 55 members. Mm -hmm. So that's a fairly healthy yes. number. So we meet regularly at, uh, in basements. Right. And um, we have a meeting every month, uh, mm -hmm. just like Ova. Just like Ova does. So the bigger centres have got organ organised to yes. have meetings. Whereas the rest of them, you know, if you live in. Uh, the remote part of Saskatchewan or a remote part of Mississippi and you're a lone member. Your communication is through our website or through the magazine. It's really nice to see uh, British modeling here in Canada and uh, I see that you have a layout that you're working on here. Mm -hmm. um, what scale is this? Um, it's four millimeters to the foot. Yes. Which normally would mean double O. Right. But in fact this is P4, or which stands for Proto 4, mm -hmm. the difference being that the track gauge, instead of being 16.5 millimeter, is 18.83 millimeter, which makes it exact. Oh, okay. So, you, so it's a very North prototypical. Americans, North Americans are lucky because HO mm. and 16.5 mil track is almost dead on. Uh -huh. uh, but it's not for British. So this is an attempt to get it right. Yes. So basically, that, that commits you to almost making your own track, mm -hmm. uh, certainly making your own turnout, yes. and uh, making uh, modifications to every freight car, passenger car and locomotive mm -hmm. so that it'll run on this track because not only is the track different, the wheel profile is different. There's, when you look at it, there's almost no flange I because see. It's, it's the scale. Well, let's talk a little bit about that then. You start with a double O type of, uh, of uh, equipment, or, right. and yep. then uh, can you just grab maybe one of the cars yeah. and show well, us what you're doing? Um, I mean, this is a standard proprietary um, double O car yes. made by Dapple. Right. And uh, so this is a very simple approach. Mm -hmm. Take the old wheels out, put the new wheels in, and you can see. Or you can't see, yeah, you, can actually. <laughs> you know, how how uh, small the flange yeah. is on that. Now, that's been done by just a straight wheel replacement. So you buy those wheels. Uh, someone actually uh, manufactures oh, yeah. them then yeah. uh, as yeah. as a gauge. There are folks who manufacture those. Yeah. Now, one thing that is very often done with protofor. Now, this is from an etch brass kit. Yes. Is you'll have a, a rocking. Oh, isn't that so, interesting? So that will help make it stick to the track. Hmm. Uh, you know, if, if there are minor variations in the track, it'll take care of itself. Yeah, with, so uh, with the very uh, fine uh, flanges, it's not as forgiving, so having that rocking really helps a lot. It does, it does. Yeah. yeah. And so you actually uh, hand laid all your track then as well? Well, for... um, I did originally, yes. and then I, I took it up because yeah. some decent um, track that was ready-made became right. available because the advantage is it's got all the, the uh, tie plates and, tie plates and yeah. everything yeah. in it. But, but it doesn't go out of gauge. Right, <laughs> right. And, but the turnouts are all handmade. They okay. are, um, uh, they're made out of uh, wooden sleepers with little holes in and then um, uh, rivets and then solder to the solder to the rivet. Well that's terrific. Uh, if you want to be Bored out of your good, you sit down and do a few. 
<laughs> few of those are That's all right. Jobs, it's a good yeah. time to listen to classical music. <clears throat> exactly. Or watch a football game. Yeah. Or, you know, yeah. whatever turns your crank. So. Now this model railroad here, looking at it, uh, it's it, it's uh, done in the very much in the English tradition or mm -hmm. the British tradition. I see it's. Uh, it's it's basically, I guess, staging that feeds into a particular area that right. you're going to model. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's your sort of classic country terminus diorama mm -hmm. with offstage being the rest of the world. Right. And uh, this particular one is modeled on a company called the London and Northwestern Railway. Yes. It was no, it, it, it had a sort of common name, the Premier Line. Mm -hmm. uh, they weren't boastful, they just knew it was the best. <laughs> and um, it is modelled in uh, the summer of 1913 and um, it represents my impression of an extension that the London and North Western Railway were going to make mm -hmm. but never did. So this would have been just uh, prior to the First World War? Yes. Yeah. And uh, so everything was still at peace and at a high point, but yet yeah. a lot of traditional kinds of British way of life. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I mean, at that time, there were about 123 mm -hmm. independent companies yes. operating in Britain, all with their own liveries, all with their own practice. Mm -hmm. But the London and North Western is the one that I'm uh, uh, that I'm modelling. I was really um, impressed with your backdrops. I'm kind of a backdrop uh, lover, especially when they're hand painted. Uh, these were done by a friend, I understand. They were by uh, Peter Cunningham. Yes. Uh, he, he's actually an artist. Um, that's how he makes his living. Yes. But he's a good friend, and um, he was very kind enough to do uh, this. The, the top part of it is based on a photograph that my wife took yes. at Ambleside, which is where this is supposed to be. And um, the rest of it, sort of just generic northwest England uh, Lake District countryside. Yeah. I can see that uh, Peter's um, obviously uh, from that neck of the woods because he sure has captured the skies and the way the clouds flow on yeah. a nice day. Yeah, he has. There almost is a bit of a wind or breeze in the air. Which would be normal. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So, uh, the, how long have you been working on this particular model? Oh, God, don't ask. <laughs> <laughs> a long time, eh? <laughs> a long time, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, it's been through several iterations, yes. but I've probably been working on this particular iteration for the best part of five years. Mm -hmm. so. so, you built it on plywood? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and uh, one, one by three, one by three construction. Plywood, and then the track is on, is yeah. on cork. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's built on a flat, like the dioramas typically yeah, are. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, it. It, it's basically just what that part of the countryside looked mm -hmm. like. Um, I mean, I, I have built them where it's been built open frame, which yes. is a sort of more traditional North American one. But this one here just didn't seem to lend itself to that. So, yeah, mm -hmm. build it on the flat. So you've been uh, progressing quite a bit in the hobby, though, with uh, getting into some scratch building and uh, doing your own track laying and everything. How long have you been in the hobby? Another question. It's a big question. It's a long, a long, long time, time yeah. eh? So is, this isn't your first railroad, then, is oh, what no. I'm saying. Oh, You've no. had a, no, several I mean, of them. I've been modeling. I've been. A, I've had a model railway. Yeah. Since I was actually four. Mm -hmm. That's 67 years ago. Oh my no, goodness. No, 66 years ago. <laughs> but um, I've yeah. had a. I've had a model railway, proper an electric model railway, since I was about 11. Mm -hmm. So that's still a fair amount. Of a lot of time. Yeah, that's neat. And I suppose you've been in different scales and been a, an eclectic person in the early days like the rest of us? Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. not quite as eclectic as some. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I, I did dabble in N scale and we'll, we'll get to see that yeah. later. Um, but I've really focused on double O. Yes. And then it was only when Proto 4 became uh, a reality in the early 60s that I moved into, uh, mm -hmm. moved into uh, Proto 4. Now this is a DC system or DCC? It is. It's yeah, DC. DCC has taken off yeah. in Britain just yeah. as much as it has here. Okay. And um, as the chips have got smaller, of course, it's become easier to put them into smaller mm -hmm. English locomotives. Yes. Um, and now the the, the uh, sound chips are the size of sugar cubes. Oh yeah. No. Yeah. And you see lots of models these days when you go to a good show in Britain, you'll see them with sound, you'll see them yeah. DCC. Probably half the layouts you see will be DCC, yeah. and half of those will have a lot of sound on them. 
as well. Very nice. Yeah, and it's the motors are starting to be can motors and that yeah, sort well, of thing as well. Well, they've been can motors for years yeah. in, in uh, Britain. Um, the thing that's always been the downfall of British locomotives have been the more modern ones, the diesels, where they were only powering at one end. And oh yes, I saw that. Really yeah. crappy operation. Now they've smartened up, mm -hmm. so about time. See, Rapido's even doing a, a British yep. uh, system yep. eventually yep. here. Right. So you've got this set up uh, in a very traditional fashion. Mm -hmm. I see on the right here you have a, a throttle, <clears throat> and then you have a selector switch on the on the left, and that gives you a certain blocks, I take it? Yeah. Uh, well, For, I don't know certain, who's going who's who's to control it. Control the block. Right. Yeah. Uh, I, here, yeah. um, one that I'm going to put in the middle, right. and the guy at the other end, so that you could you could have three people yeah. running. So if you wanted to give running. block A to somebody who had a particular locomotive and throttle, you could. That's basically yeah, right. you could. And yeah. then there's a block block K yeah. and yeah. you know, and then you've got your and then uh, for turnouts, their uh, touch ones. Touch. Oh yeah. So. Oh, that's terrific. Another tradition. <laughs> yes. Inexpensive. Yeah, of course. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, and you, right. yeah, the, I find it's interesting because people will often say, oh, the hobby's expensive. <coughs> um, but it's no, not really so, depending on the decisions you make in terms of uh, uh, the compromises. Uh, and, and I mean, that's what I like yeah. about the hobby. Yeah. You can do it with a checkbook if you want, yeah. but you can also do it without spending a hell of a lot of uh, money. Yeah, well, that's a clever idea. I, in fact, I thought, saw something very similar over at Bill Scobie's SN3 layout and the entranceway into his staging. Mm -hmm. He had the same thing. He had a bunch of uh, contact points and a wire and you right. tap the you one, tap the right one. Uh, in order to go into right. the uh, into the staging yard that yep. you want. Yeah, it's very handy. Well, let's go and have a look at uh, your staging area. Yep. Here okay. we are in your staging area and I see you have a nice uh, storage uh, shelf against the wall and you've got uh, <clears throat> A large number of uh, white, is it white metal style, yep. style yep. locomotives? Um, the greyish ones yeah. are white metal. Yeah. And the yellowish ones are brass. Yes. Uh, made f th so these here made from et etch brass kits. Mm -hmm. The others made from uh, white metal. White metal. And these are the ones that are in progress, I take yeah. it. Yeah. They're in different states of development yeah. at the moment. And, uh, it's very interesting. A lot of these um, pieces, like especially these ones that are the uh, the, uh, the shorter version locomotives with the, the attached tenders, they're uh, very popular. I hear now with the ON30 group, they're uh, taking right. those and yep. converting them into uh, ON30 locomotives, and they use the uh, the boilers and the mechanisms. Mm -hmm. It's a, quite a popular right. thing. Right. And down below here is, are your staging tracks. This is right. a rather interesting setup you have here. Maybe I'll let you explain that. Okay, well, <clears throat> the, the, uh, light, the, the diorama Ambleside is up there. It's a double track coming in. Sure. Um, now, they run out of different tracks in Britain. It's uh, left hand running. Mm -hmm. So, this will be the inbound, this will be the outbound right. track. And here we can store. Um, Equipment, right? Um, leave an open place for something coming in, and then mm -hmm. other things ready to go uh, to go out. And it's all interlocked so that you can't accidentally put something on the floor. Okay. So, for example, if oh, I'll just show you this guy here, just a, so. Okay, so this this is something that maybe just come in. Yes. If I want to change to a different location, now he won't move. Right, so once you pull that out, the power is uh, off. Power is off. And in fact, it's doubly done for the, the mm -hmm. sides. Now, just suppose I want to run it over here for some reason. Um, I probably wouldn't with this one, but at least it just sort of shows what you can do. Mm -hmm. And now I want to run it. No, it won't run because you I haven't. haven't dialed in the two lines. Right. And what that does is it makes absolutely sure that you can't get so, two locomotives running together right. and so, then have an accident where one falls down the So what did you do there the on gap. the panel again? Okay, you were, you did something you had a selector switch for a particular track number? Yeah, right. And okay. so it's it's what's the track here? 
yes. and watch the truck on the... Okay, uh, so there's a number and a letter uh, associated right. with each one. I so see that. So you, you align the number and the letter. Right. And in the middle, you can't see it here, and it's a bit tough to see it, but underneath there are wipers yeah. that, are, that are touching corresponding wipers underneath so okay. that um, as, you, as you dial here and move here, the, the only things you can energize are the ones you, you connect. You could do that with DCC as well because mm -hmm. it's basically just in DC parlance, it's energizing the north line and the south line. Yes. Well, the same thing could apply in DCC, so that you can't inadvertently send something careering off into mm -hmm. the... Uh, into so the as you have it selected here, it says 1 and B. Right. Um, and uh, as you can see here, it's on track 1 and B. B. And so, yeah. if I wanted to bring this locomotive out, for right. example, he's on 6, G, is where it's lined up. Mm -hmm. and so, so he'll go on 6G. I can bring him out, and no, this guy's not doing anything. Right. So, if I now, let's say I just, I brought that out for some other uh, purpose. Uh, I'll just bring him down. See, see what happens? This wasn't all part of the plan, because there was no plan. <laughs> <laughs> so now we're on 2G. 2G now. 2G or not 2G? There we are. And there we go. So. Fantastic. And there's the uh, pieces that you were talking about for your contact. Oh yes, points. right. You know you can see them. Yeah. Now. So let me just pull it out a little bit further. Is that okay there? Or do yeah, you that's it? fine. Yep. And uh, so above on on here yep. there are corresponding ones, so that when they touch, yes, you're right. Uh, you're, you're just dialing in the uh, the bits that the bits that are touching. Fantastic. And that's on a simple uh, system there of uh, you'd find this like a drawer right. pin chain or of, of no, sorts. No, it is. That's yeah. all. That's all this is. Yeah. IKEA. IKEA. Uh, sorry, not IKEA. Um, Lee Valley. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah, Lee Valley yeah. uh, uh, drawer. Cause they're nice and they're smooth. Yes. And, and uh, they're solid. And they're solid. Yeah. 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 Right. <clears throat> and then the same thing goes with the um, turntable. Mm -hmm. Now th that's lined up for the inbound track. So yeah. because one of the things you do with the tender locomotive, typically you would come in, you'd want to turn it around. Yes. And so that is also interlocked, mm -hmm. so that you can't drive something onto the turntable when it's not lined up, and you can't turn it when it's uh, locked mm -hmm. to here. So. That. So this would be a good. Uh, three or four operators then you'd have your trains coming in and going right. out and somebody uh, basically building trains in here yep. and uh, putting locomotives away and bringing new locomotives. I think those uh, white metal coaches are fantastic. Mm -hmm. What era do they so, date to? Uh, well, late 1800s. Yeah. And uh, they would have run till the uh, 30s. Mm -hmm. um, and the models, when yeah. were they made? These? Yeah. Uh, oh, these were made about 15 years ago. Yeah. I haven't got around to painting them yet. Yeah. Uh, that one was made about 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. These are white metal, that was it. That one is etched brass. It's nice. And uh, mm. a lot of heft to the hobby. <laughs> yeah, right. right. Now over on the other side of the room here, you have another interesting railroad, it's uh, this pan across here. It's a man-scale layout. It's quite fantastic. Let's go have a look at that.